Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sessions. This week, we got a fun one for you. So today, we're talking day one with Origin and Workstation. What does that mean? We're going to try to get you fast-tracked to being productive and useful with Origin. You know, it's a super easy product to get uh, started with, but we're going to actually kind of take you on a speed train to get through starting and all the stuff you need to learn. So we're going to start by unboxing the Workstation, pulling Origin out, showing you a little bit of kind of the way we think about how to quickly get started, where to start if you're uh, a little worried about how to get started, get, a good, get you along a good path there. And then we'll kind of go from there and we'll take you over to Sam, who's going to actually show us a bunch of stuff that you'll see after you get started on the workstation. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and I've already got everything from the workstation pulled out here. And uh, I'm just going to I'm not going to show you an unboxing. You can do that when you, it arrives, but uh, all this stuff is comes in the workstation, and uh, we're just going to quickly take off the pieces and start getting them set up. So I'm going to actually show you how we connect this here. So we got some pretty cool little nifty features we've added into the workstation. Uh, what you'll quickly notice is the MFT holes line up with a little cutout here. Uh, there's multiple ways to attach the workstation to a bench, but uh, I'm going to show you this one. So uh, let's quickly do that. So just grab some F-style clamps or really whatever you are, uh, have, have around. You'll put them in the top, and then we're just going to kind of tighten this down. So there's one. Okay, so now workstation is securely attached to the table. All good there. Next up, we're going to attach the clamping face to the top. Uh, you'll notice if we come over to the other camera here, Noah, uh, you'll see there's a few different holes here. This actually allows you to attach the clamping face at different heights, depending on what you're doing. So if you're cutting maybe some deeper tenons, uh, you can lower it and add a spoil board here that'll protect uh, the back side of your piece while you're cutting. Uh, for what we're doing right now, we can just put it at the top uh, and it's gonna be okay. So I'll put that in. There's a two little screws here, you know, just quick tighten there and a quick tighten here. And now we're off and running. That's all set up. Uh, next up, we got the clamping arms. So these go right into the side here. They just kind of, and it's kind of nice. You don't even have to tighten them down. They'll hold before you can tighten them. And then the same thing, a little tighten here and a little tighten there. Okay. Last thing is the, the support arm. So this actually slides in right here and allows you to support origin while you're cutting. Uh, it's a pretty awesome little feature as you're working on smaller stuff or bigger stuff, you can move it and then lock it down it won't go anywhere and you can use that as your uh, base. Uh, so the other thing it does is you can plug it in at the top here and that allows you to reference the top of your piece, which is quite important and we'll get to that later. Uh, but for what we're gonna show first is a quick little demo. So, okay, so for this one, you know, we get the question a lot of time about, okay, where do I, where do I start quickly? Uh, you know, I'm new to Origin. I, I just want to really figure it out quickly. So I'm going to suggest a really simple project to get started. What you'll find is these projects that we have teach you a lot of stuff about Origin, but it's best to keep it simple. And then we'll, we'll kind of progress through harder and harder projects. But this is my, this is my suggestion for where you should start. So uh, this is the shelf. This is actually uh, an accessory that comes with the workstation. And if you notice here, uh, it's actually kind of this adjustable height uh, shelf, which attaches to here. And it's a really nice way to, to quickly get a piece of any size fixtured to the workstation so you can begin cutting. You know, what, what you're going to notice is when one of the key things when using Origin is having a, you know, you, you don't have to, but ideally we like to have a single plane of whatever you're cutting on and all the, the markers here. So the workstation's kind of uh, fast track to be able to allow you to do that quickly. So you can throw your piece in, slide up, and then you'll notice 
you may not be able to see it, but there's a little lock on the bottom and you just pull it up. There's actually a kind of a three lock system. It's a, it's a loose, loose at the bottom and halfway up, it starts getting tighter, but you can still move it a little bit uh, and then a full lock up. So in this case, we just lower it, attach the support bar to the, the top, and then we pull it. And now we have our piece perfectly aligned with the top. Uh, if the piece is too big, you don't have to use the support bar. So in this case, it's, it's pretty close. I would say we, we probably don't need it here. If we had a smaller piece, let's say something like, uh, you know, maybe something like, like this, we could actually put the support bar in and it would uh, help support origin. So in this case, we're just gonna do it without it. And now, next thing. So this is, as you can see, pretty quick to put together. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a quick fixturing station, which allows you to really get going fast. So Next thing up is double-sided tape. So Brennan uh, will link uh, link out to this. You can find it uh, on the website about you know some stuff you need when you get Origin. This is this does not come in the box, but uh, it's something that we use a lot, and it's really really something uh, that we suggest everyone to have because it just makes fixturing so much easier. So all we do is lay down a piece of tape here kind of give it a good little uh, rub. We're going to peel that off. Okay. And then now we just take our piece, push it up against the edge and adhere it and then give it some pressure. Uh, this double sided tape, it really works well if you give it some pressure uh, right when you apply. If you just kind of lay it on there, it won't stick that well. If you give it a little pressure, it'll stick much better. Okay, so, so that's that. Okay, so now we have our piece secured to the workstation and now we're ready to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull Origin out. Uh, this is the sustainer Origin comes in. Uh, it's awesome for traveling, for carrying it around, for keeping it safe uh, or just putting it away when you're not using it. Um, and we're just gonna power on Origin. Okay. So while we're powering that on, I'm going to attach the camera so you guys can see the screen here. And OK, so first things first, we need to go ahead and uh, put the bit in origin. So uh, nothing to be scared about. Super easy, simple change. Uh, you'll notice there's a little uh, locking screw here. Uh, just un unscrew that so it, the spindle's loose unplug the plug here so you can remove the spindle and then here we go so i have the spindle all i have to do here is you no know, can we switch to this camera here maybe for a minute so uh all you have to do is just like any other kind of classic spindle design you just kind of rotate the bit around until it locks there so now that that little piece locks it and i can twist uh at this point i'm just going to find a bit this is uh, the standard quarter inch bit that comes with Origin. Uh, if it's a little tight, you can unscrew the collet so that it will sink in there. One little quick trip, quick tip is a lot of uh, the bits have a little marking on it. I like to kind of pick that marking above the top, right? Uh, and make sure when you're cranking down this uh, bit, you're not doing it around these areas that are not fully uh, a whole shank. So now we have that in, just give it a little tight squeeze, nothing crazy. Um, and then now we have our bit in here. So at that point, we go back into origin, tighten up this, and then plug in the power. Okay, so now we are at that point. Okay, so now we're ready to start uh, getting ready to cut. And, and for this, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. So I have this this little uh, black uh, cylinder here, and to get used to Origin, I really find this is a great little example of how to get started quickly. Uh, all we're gonna do is cut a circle in here with really nice fit on this. Okay. So first up uh, is measuring the pipe. Obviously, we're going to input that into Origin. We're not going to use a computer. We're going to go directly from Origin to cutting. So I'm just going to measure this quickly. 
one, two, five, three, one, two, five, three. Okay, so now that we're here, we need to, to go ahead and quickly set it up here. So we're just gonna start a new scan quickly. And Noah, maybe we we'll switch over to the camera on origin. Okay, so all we're gonna do is start a new scan. In this, what you notice, I'm just kind of moving origin around, slowly gathering all the, the markers. I can lift origin up if I need to, um, to capture all the grain here. And when I'm done, I hit finish, and now we have a, a scan that we can start putting files into. So you're gonna notice uh, in this session, we're not gonna dive into how do you create files for origin. We're really just gonna learn origin by using it. So we're gonna start quickly on tools. So we're gonna create a circle and we're gonna type in one point, one point two five five four. Okay, so there's our circle, and I'm just gonna move it around. Now, this is a really cool thing with Origin. Uh, you can use pinch to zoom, and you can use this little slider to kind of see where your piece is and where you're gonna place this file. The Origin kind of acts like a big mouse, so if I move Origin around, it will show me kind of that icon locked to, locked to Origin. So I'm just gonna add it over here and put it in the corner. Okay, so. So here's our circle, and now we have the file created that matches this pipe here. So all I have to do now is start cutting. So you need to grab some. Now, one of the things I haven't talked about is safety glasses and hearing protection. Uh, you know, anytime you're using power tools, Origin included, it's important to keep your body protected. So we always recommend safety glasses and hearing protection. Okay. so. We're not ready to cut yet. There's one last thing we have to do. So when we put the bit in, we actually need to know the distance between the bit and the surface so that when we input a depth into Origin, we can automatically do that. And Origin has a really cool feature called Z-Touch. All we have to do is click the button, tell it we want a Z-Touch, and it'll automatically lower the bit until it touches the surface with the bit. It'll detect that, and then that'll be done. So that was pretty simple. We don't have to get any extra things out to measure or input anything. It's just automatically done. So now we have our Z depth set. We have our bit size set, the offset zero, and we need to just type in a depth. So in this case, I'm just gonna go, uh, I'm just gonna go 0.1 inches for now. So the, we're just doing a small cut. You know, the, the, the point of this exercise is start getting, ex uh, start getting started cutting, right? So. Here we go, and now, you'll notice when I move origin over to the circle where I placed it earlier, when I'm near the edge, it shows up this kind of like uh, gray highlight. And that highlight's actually how uh, origin knows what you wanna cut. So it's giving you a preview of what you wanna cut. If you have a bigger bit in, that will show a bigger removal. So you're, you're really getting a preview of what you're going to remove when you look at this. So this is always a nice way to, before you start cutting, you'll know exactly what's gonna happen. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this one, okay? I, you know, you'll, you'll, you can kind of hear variable speed here, and uh, you may not be able to hear me as much right now, but, yeah. So uh, the spindle has variable speed, and that means you can speed it up or slow it down depending on what you're cutting, the types of materials, what bits you're using. Uh, but in this case, I normally stick to around five when I'm cutting with a quarter inch bit on normal wood. So we're going to just go ahead and cut this one. Okay. And all we have to do here is kind of use origin as a rough following path. So you'll notice here, the circle is actually the corrective range of origin. And as long as I keep that circle on the path here, origin will automatically correct the spindle to be able to cut that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Super simple. We've already set everything up, and here we go.
Okay. Okay, so here we go. We have our first cut. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and let's get a test fit. So what you're gonna notice is, oh wait, it's actually pretty close, but the inside of that circle wasn't removed. And normally uh, you would go back to your computer, edit the file, but in this case, this is where Origin really shines. We can actually just come back to it quickly and we can tell the system, hey, you know what? We cut that circle on the inside. Now we wanna remove everything in between it. So if I just change it to a pocket, that will now change the outline of what we're gonna cut. And now I can cut the rest of that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of sandpaper to just clean up the edges so we can see how it fits. Okay, and then, so it's pretty close. Uh, you can see it's a little tight. Uh, so another beautiful thing about Origin is being able to change this a little bit on the fly. So if I come back over to the circle here, so we cut the pocket already. I'm gonna go back to an inside cut and I'm gonna erase these, the cut history we've already done so you can see it a little bit better. So you'll notice there's a feature called offsets and offsets allow you to, in real time, change your pathing. So let's just change, right now the offset's zero, which means we cut right on the line. If I change it to 0.05, you'll see the preview shrinks away from the edge. Now, that is great when you want to do fitting geometry, especially for this kind of hype thing. Uh, the offsets are, you know, quite, uh, we can do a lot of stuff with offsets. So I'm just going to go ahead and do like a 0 0.005, so a 5,000 negative offset, and we're going to try that. So you'll notice uh, it just moves the path out just a tiny bit, and we're going to go cut that. And all I'm doing here is just moving Origin slowly, trying to let Origin do its job. I don't have to follow the circle perfectly. It'll, it'll help me as long as I get it close. Okay. So that's a very small offset we've done. And there we go. So now you can see, let me pull this off so we can see it actually. So I'm just gonna remove the shelf real quick. And what's kind of cool is because we've already taped it on here. We can remove the shelf with our piece and you'll see that it's a very nice fit here. Yeah, a oh, little lower, a little lower. There we go. So yeah, that's, that's, this is one of the things that I, I kind of subscribe to people. You know, it's very easy to get started with Origin. There's no reason to be worried about learning it. Just get some scrap pieces uh, from your wood pile Put it on the workstation and start playing around with the on tool CAD. Uh, you know, I think it's important to take it some, by step sometimes, you know, trying to figure out what design software you're going to use before you start cutting with Origin. I would suggest get on Origin, go do some on tool CAD to get a feel for how the machine works, how you can manipulate things on, on, on tool. And uh, I think that'll be a really good thing. So, so that, that's a really simple way to get started. And the next thing I want to talk about is your next project. So we're going to go over to my computer here and I'm going to kind of show you uh, my suggested first kind of real project. So if you go to Shaper Hub, you'll notice uh, we have all sorts of projects from the community. Uh, people have been uploading their own projects. Me and Sam have uploaded ours. ours. There's a lot of cool projects on Shaper Hub that you can browse. The files are automatically available to you. Um, but they come with some, you know, some are harder than others. Some don't have complete instructions. Uh, and we just launched a new product called Premium Projects, which actually is a really cool way to learn things about Origin and create these really cool projects. So I'm going to suggest to you that this candle holder, which is a free project on Origin or on Shaper Hub, is a great way to get started. Um, it teaches you the basics of how to use the grid, how to align designs to the materials, how to work with onto a CAD and an imported design from the computer. There's a lot of things you can learn here. And when you're done, you get this pretty cool 
little uh, candle holder. You can give it away to a friend. Uh, I actually have one here that I'll show you in just a second, but this project's really good for learning this stuff. And one of the things you're gonna find about premium projects is after you've purchased them, uh, this one's a free one, so you can get a feel for it, but you'll see that there's a whole bunch of, uh, bunch of information about this project. So you can look at your instructions online, you can look at uh, technical drawings of the file, you can even download 3D models and modify them for yourself, uh, and the files are automatically synced to origin. But let, let's check out the instructions real quick, because I think this is one of the key things for people who are not too sure about all the steps that need to happen. So uh, you can view this on mobile, you can view this on uh, your desktop as well, but the cool thing about these premium projects is they walk you through every step. So if you're a little unsure of how do I get started with this, you can just follow each step and it'll tell you, you need a spoil board of this size. You need to put shaper tape on your material. Now we need to scan the workspace and now we're gonna create a grid and it walks you through how to create a grid. And it will show you some details if you need to know, you know, for this step, you're gonna need an engraving bit. Uh, these type of things are really nice for uh, people who are really wanting to learn, uh, you know, and there's some really cool stuff. So you'll notice here that the file for the candle actually doesn't include the holes for the candle or the, the tea light. And we're actually gonna use onto a CAD to place those files. So I don't wanna give away too much, uh, but I think this is a really cool project to get started with. And it really teaches you a lot about all the various aspects of origin software. So let's jump over here. I'll just show you real quick uh, the one I did uh, the other day. Maybe if we go to this camera here, Noah. So this is what you end up making. Uh, you'll notice it has a really cool detail at the end, which is you use the engraving bit to uh, run a fillet around the edge. So you could do this on a router table, but there are some really cool things that you can do with Origin where you can't do on a router table, like if you wanted to follow an inside curve and fill it that. So these projects are about, you know, giving you these cool outputs as well as teaching you a few things along the way. So with that, I'd say, you know, start playing with OnTool CAD and then as you're working your way through that, starting to get to know Origin, it's a good way to start looking on Shaper Hub, looking at projects. If you're not computer, uh, you know, savvy and you don't know uh, design software or CAD or these things, like I wouldn't start with trying to learn those. I would start with trying to use Origin and learning that. And then once you start figuring all this out, then it's a good time to jump in the design software. So, so that's kind of the beginning, but I wanna jump over to Sam for a little while. Sam's gonna talk about some of the common things because you know, I've already showed uh, with, I've already shown you the workstation, but what happens if you wanna cut something bigger? different size materials. Sam's gonna go over some stuff, strategies for taping, and you know, really all the ways that uh, you can work after you kind of need some bigger space than work sp workstation. But for a lot of things, this is a really great uh, tool for fixturing and getting up to, start, up to speed quickly. So Sam, can you hear me? Can indeed. We're, uh, yeah, we're gonna sit up over here and just go through some common situations and uh, how to approach your taping strategy, uh, and we'll talk through why that's relevant with Origin. So uh, first things first, I should say, uh, Origin looks out the front. You will have seen on the, uh, on the workstation, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> you will have seen on the workstation, it's pointing at a field of uh, tape that already exists there. So that's permanent tape. You never need to lay down more tape there. Uh, that's, you know, very durable. Uh, and will we'll hold up over many, many, many cuts. You just keep putting your stock in, readjusting your shelf or clamping arrangement, and uh, just start cutting. Whereas when you're in the field and want to cut something strange, large, uh, whatever, uh, that doesn't fit in the workstation, you're going to use shape tape. So this is what Origin looks at to track its position. And when we lay it down, uh, it's actually, there's, there's no info in this except for the dimensions of these and their sort of unique identity. So the way we lay it down is we just drag it across. We don't stretch it. We keep it straight, flat. So I'm creating a flat plane now with uh, plenty of these known uh, dimension markers on it. And that's all that Origin cares about. So these don't have uh, any info about what you're cutting. 
It doesn't even know where the, uh, the panel itself is. It just knows where origin is relative to these markers. You'll notice I'm, uh, it looks like I'm doing it very carefully, but uh, I'll intentionally put one at an angle here just to uh, highlight. It's not about the angle of these relative to one another. It's kind of the density of these markers that matter. So we want a flat plane of markers that doesn't move, uh, that isn't damaged. Uh, I'll just move this to the side momentarily. So Origin needs to see about uh, more than five and sort of optimal is around 10 to 15 at any given time. And I'll show you just in a second where the camera is pointing at when it's doing this. So you can see here I'm on like four inch centers or so, and I don't need to be super careful about where I place these. I could put another strip down here, but if I'm cutting down here, uh, Origin's going to be looking in front of that, so uh, there's no need. So you find you don't use as much as this as you sort of might suspect initially. Now, I'll bring Origin up here, and uh, I've got a little prop here. Don't know if we can see there, Noah. So this is approximately uh, the area that the camera, which is under here, uh, is looking at. So you can see there's little LEDs and a camera that looks out the front. Now this is what Origin is using to track its position once it's scanned in these markets. So just keep in mind, you want tape in this area, and you'll be cutting back here. This is where the center of the cutter, and the area that the camera is looking at is north of that. So just make sure if you're uh, intending to cut all the way to the end of the panel here, uh, you know, we can quickly see that Origin can only see like five markers or less there. So that's gonna be a problem. So just keep in mind, Origin always needs to see five markers in this basic area here. Um, we can bring that out again when it's relevant, but that just gives you an idea of what Origin is looking at. So now I'm going to move to the side here, and I'll pop this off, and just start scanning. So the process with Origin, as Sean has already shown you, is uh, scan, design, cut. So we'll kick off with scanning. So scanning is facing the camera. We'll look at my screen. Excellent. Uh, and what it's doing is it's recognizing these markers, it's measuring the distances between them, and it's logging them all into a big flat plane of uh, known positions. So now you'll notice I'm moving smoothly and slowly. Uh, I don't want to add jitter, jiggle, or any kind of uh, unnecessary vibrations. So I'm just slowly sort of mowing the lawns here. I'm making sure that each, each pass I do overlaps the last by a significant amount. Um, so, you know, I can see this area, and then I'll come and see, add this to it. Uh, I'm overlapping about two strips of tape between my scans. So, um, one more thing to note, I'll just finish this. Uh, the area I'm scanning, uh, this lower portion is kind of the premium area. This is where the, the data is the clearest to origin. So I try to make sure that every marker that I scan has been imaged in this lower portion of the, uh, of the, the visible area. So that's why I do uh, a couple of passes that overlap quite a lot. So what we have now is a field of tape. Um, Origin knows where it is relative to that tape. Uh, and what's really cool is it's showing me the, uh, the actual raster image, so the, the, what you would see with your eyes. Now keep in mind, these blue markers are the only things that Origin is interested in. So every one that's turned blue is a marker that it's recognized. And it's only interested in complete markers. So uh, if I was to cut through these markers, uh, they would no longer contribute to its ability to track. And in the top corner here, we're seeing, this is the tape health meter. So that's telling me that at present, in this area, Origin is satisfied that it can see uh, adequate markers. So it's, it's probably in the realms of 10 to 15 markers. Now you'll notice as I move towards the edge of the panel, it's going to drop away uh, and become red. That's telling me I'm approaching five markers. And that looks about right down here. I can see uh, five markers is about all it can see. And then at some point, you see this red line, and you'll notice it's no longer updating. It doesn't know where it is. So just keep an eye, as you're moving around, keep an eye on this little uh, tape health meter, and you'll see it changing as you move, uh, depending on how many markers it can see. So whenever it's red, that's just a warning that it's time for you to start uh, reorienting 
Uh, maybe you need to blow some dust off. Uh, maybe you need to, there's plenty of things that, that might resolve that. You may actually have cut through so much tape that you need to add another strip and use a little technique called add to scan. We'll actually do that just now to show you what that looks like. So you notice I've, I've jumped into the design mode. I'm gonna go back to scan and I'm gonna add to scan here. So uh, I'll just add one more strip of tape here. So don't feel you're ever constrained by the initial batch of tape you put down. Um, you can always add to scan. So this is just going to behave the same as the original, original scan, but we're going to uh, bring this uh, data into the fold. It's actually also going to add uh, whatever was imaged down here. So if I added a pencil mark and just wanted to uh, bring that into my scan, the visible uh, workspace, I can do an add to scan and then I'll be able to see it. But uh, yeah, so you'll see now when we zoom out, that element is, uh, is visible there. One quick note, uh, if I go to workspaces, uh, my previous workspace, which we just looked at, will not include that detail. So you'll see here, uh, there's no, no markers up there, even though I've added them. Um, and we can jump between the two. So 104 is the one with the markers. So that's just a, a quick overview of uh, add to scan. Now, um, this is obviously sort of the perfect situation, right? We've got dimensional, uh, oh, sorry, uh, laminated ply, uh, very flat, very stable, very predictable. So I'm gonna start introducing some situations that uh, could be a problem. So this is, uh, I'll just show you here. This is sort of a little bit cupped and warped. Uh, so this is a situation where if we were to tape this, we would have a non-planar surface. So uh, this one's thin enough that obviously we can double-sided tape it down, as uh, Sean showed previously, uh, and get a very you know, flat surface. But if we have a big uh, you know, warped surface, even like some uh, unfinished surfaces are warped enough that they can introduce error into your tape field. Uh, there are, if you can't get it flat, um, you know, by running it through a uh, jointer or a planer uh, or whatever. Uh, you may have to do something like find a little piece of flat material. If it's a small detail, uh, sometimes we tape this up and then cut through it into the non-flat surface. So if you've got a surface that's not, uh, not flat, not stable, not good to rest origin on, you can often put this on uh, this is just like eighth inch ply. Um, so then all you would do is, if you touched off on this surface, add another eighth of an inch to it, and you're uh, off to the races. So then we will look at some of the problems that could trip you up. So if I had tape on my spoil board, uh, and then I started adding more tape above it, here, under this, this is three quarter inch ply. Um, like this feels natural, everything's fine. You're thinking about this top panel and not thinking about this panel. But if I uh, didn't hide the, uh, the markers below it and went to uh, scan this, Origin would get very confused. Uh, it's looking for tape to be coplanar. So these are on two different planes and it's going to try and find a plane that averages these two worlds that are obviously on different planes. So, uh, you know, sometimes if you're just trying to be quick, you can just mask out the uh, area that you don't want scanned. So then if I produced a new scan here, I can, you know, avoid seeing the tape below and everything's fine. That's kind of a hack. Uh, you know, just get the tape away from Origin's camera if you intend to be cutting something, a new project at a different height. Either peel it up or uh, stow that board away. Now, if I was trying to do some, oh, oh move this, uh, this big panel here.
So often we end up in situations uh, where we're working on a panel that's smaller uh, than we can you know, rest origin on. Here a little bit. Uh, and see enough tape throughout the operation. So if I was to tape this up, um, you know, origin would be looking out the front here and very quickly, you know, it would run out of markets. We wouldn't be able to cut, we'd only be able to cut in this bottom corner, not the whole way along this. So one of the strategies there are to get another panel that's similar height. Uh, if it's almost the exact same height, uh, that's best. And then you put double-sided tape on the bottom side of both of these. Um, and so long as these do not move, so we've got coplanar tape, and they have to remain stationary throughout the cut. So if these don't move, we are going to get a good outcome. Um, if this was to move midway, even sort of flexing is not a good look. That can be a problem. Uh, then you're going to have uh, part of the cut will be offset from pre-movement and post-movement because Origin's only interested in this, its relationship to this uh, tape field. Um, another thing that's tempting to do uh, and can kind of get you into trouble is if you have a setup like this. Um, let's flip this around so it fits. So, you know, it's, it's obviously uh, good to have a surface to support origin throughout the cut. So uh, if I was to double-sided tape all of these down um, and cut, there's no chance of origin coming over the edge. And, you know, if this wasn't here, there's the opportunity for it to rock a little. Um, so by having a panel to the side, and if we make sure that these are all uh, securely double-sided taped down, I've now got a really stable surface to move across. Uh, there's no risk of rocking as I go over that edge. Now, often people will, you know, tape this up as well. And then there's the danger of these moving relative to one another. I would say try to keep all your tape on one panel and then cut on another rather than doing too much crazy multi-panel stuff around what you're cutting. Obviously, this particular example would fit perfectly in the workstation and you wouldn't even need to think about it because it's got the support bar and you're uh, totally sorted. But uh, yeah, if, if there's any chance of a panel moving, try to make sure it doesn't have tape on it. Because if this is just passively supporting origin throughout the cut, uh, you're going to get good outcomes even if this was to slide a little. Because it's not impacting origin's tracking, which is 100% tied to these tape markers. Now, and maybe maybe a good one to show them here is like actually what the UI shows when you get tape movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so Origin is actually always checking and making sure the tape hasn't moved relative to each other. So if you're halfway through a project, Origin will know that the tape has moved and it will give you an alert. So that will keep you from making cuts where maybe stuff has moved and uh, uh, is not going to line up afterwards. So. So I'm intentionally setting this up for failure um, by taping two different fields. They're not double-sided taped down. So this is an example of what you, do, uh, what you want to avoid. So I'm going to sort of hover origin above the surface. You'll notice I can, uh, I can come down here and image my whole object. So, so far, that's all good, right? Where origin's happy with that. We've got, as far as it's concerned, one stationary coplanar field of tape. Um, and then if I create a shape, so we're going scan, design, cut. I'll make a little two-inch circle, place it wherever I want. You notice I'm, uh, I'm just placing this uh, sort of by eye. Uh, so this is like casual visual placement. If you wanted to place like a bow tie on a crack or a, a pocket out a knot or something, uh, this is great for that. We can get into uh, videos of, or I'll, I'll get a chance to do it, um, gridding for very accurately aligning things uh, later. Now, if I was to air cut this, so air cut's just hovering above the surface, you'll notice so far, everything's fine. But if these were to move, and you'll notice I'll probably not be able to get these back, you see it says warning, tape movement detected. So Origin tries to tell you when it's encountered a problem. Um, 
So this is what it's talking about. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, if you if take comes up, uh, the chance of you getting it back down accurately enough to for Origin to continue to uh, benefit from that tape being there is very low. So I, I I tear the tape off if it's come loose, tear it off. And then one more thing that's interesting, uh, if I was to, so the, the key concept with the tape field is that all of the tape must be on one flat plane. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, the geometry you're cutting needs to be on the same plane. It is beneficial if, if you want to go by what you see on the screen for it all to be coplanar. So, you know, we sort of broadly uh, say keep the panel you're cutting or the stock you're cutting coplanar with the tape panel. Like that's the most reliable, predictable way of doing it. But uh, when we were talking about cutting through that eighth inch piece of uh, ply, that's a perfect example of where uh, you're not actually cutting at the same height as the, uh, as the tape field itself. I'll just make a note, the, uh, the center down here, like this is uh, technically, Origin may be able to see five markers or more when it's facing down here, right? Um, as it moves along. So, you know, it's gonna see 10 easy. But what we actually want to do, if you wanna keep Origin happy, is spread those markers out as wide as you can. Like a very slender uh, strip like this is, is, it leaves a lot of ambiguity about where it is, you know, this way. If we can get um, tape to the very extremes of this, uh, this will be a lot more uh, reliable outcomes you'll get. So four strips with the tape running down the edge. Make sure you don't get splinters there. Um, this is now a, a very reliable panel to cut on. So I can work my way down here, cut all the way uh, pretty close to that end, depending on which direction I start from. But yeah, this doesn't need any uh, supporting stock on either side, unless I want to add some. And then I would do that, you know, probably leave tape off the, the adjacent elements and just uh, use them to support the base of origin so there's no rocking. Follow up with everyone on the community forums. If you want to ask more stuff, that's our round of sessions, origin onboarding straight out of the box with uh, Workstation.